all right so today is uh, the last lecture of uh, this whole series and this will end with uh, description of some waves we talked about waves in context of light uh, when we were talking of diffraction interference and uh, refraction other things we talked about wavelength of light or frequency of light the wavelength we say that it is from uh, 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer for visible light frequency is uh, some 10 to the power 15 oscillations per second and all that in the previous lecture i showed you some waves for example i showed you a wave going on a long spring we deflected one part of the spring and that hump propagated uh, down the line and we said that this is a wave similarly we had those sticks in the cello tapes and then uh, i gave some angular displacement at one end and you saw that uh, some kind of disturbance was traveling down the line and we said that it is a wave i'll show one more wave uh, today that will be on water the question that you should ask is what is the wavelength and what is the frequency in all these waves that i am demonstrating for which i had written equations like some function of x minus vt and all those things so where is that wavelength and where is the frequency enjoy this experiment and also think on this question so i have this uh, thali here steel thali and in the steel thali i have put some water now i will make some disturbance in the water I'll just touch near the center and you see if something is traveling on the surface of this water so what do you see from the center something goes towards the rim of this thali reflects from all sides collapses at the center and again spreads with reduced amplitude of course towards the rim and so on so what is the wavelength and what is the frequency in this water wave when i talk of frequency i do have some kind of oscillations in mind frequency is per unit time how many times did that uh, motion repeat so something should keep oscillating then only you can count how many times the motion is repeating but in the waves that i have shown the things just gets displaced and comes back it's not oscillating continuously in the water wave think of some water mass the wave comes passes through that point and that water mass is lifted goes down and stays there in that spring wave we gave some disturbance that hump reaches somewhere and the turns there they get displaced and come back and stay there it's not oscillating so i cannot talk of frequency here i cannot talk of wavelength here at a given instant of time i do not have repetition of the pattern so i cannot talk of wavelength for that you must have a continuously oscillating things a continuously oscillating waves a wave which is continuously being created at some point and from where it travels what will be the equation of such a wave for oscillations you know for a particular frequency the oscillation simplest oscillation is your simple harmonic motion so i said that if the wave is going in x direction its equation should be of uh, this type whatever quantity which is changing in the space and time should be some function of x minus vt and all the experiments that i had shown will confirm to this if you take proper x axis and all that and make some approximations of course now if you want oscillations at a particular frequency then uh, the functional form of this gets uh, narrowed one very common simple 
easy to deal in mathematics and very very important function will be when you have uh, oscillations which are sinusoidal sine function or cos function so it's let's say cos of x minus vt should be there and uh, dimensionally the argument of cos should be dimensionless so you should have some multiplying factor here it's like this which you can also write a cos kx minus omega t where k into v is omega now this is uh, you are familiar with this there is a kind of a simple harmonic oscillations if you fix some x in your medium some portion some small portion so fix that x it varies with time and that oscillations is simple harmonic oscillations and if uh, this is the kind of wave then it will have a periodicity in space and a periodicity in time at a particular instant if you see it changes with x and that also is uh, this cosine function so you will have periodicity in the space and therefore this cos function because of this cos function if you plot it will be like this if you plot cos kx minus omega t for a given t and this side is now x and this is wavelength this is wavelength and you fix x and c as a function of time then also it oscillates and that will be again similar looking function cos kx minus omega t and this time for a given x so this uh, will also be of that same time but this time it is time here and then this is the time period capital t this is the time period so x is fixed a particular portion it oscillates and how many how much time does it take in one oscillation that is t and this t and this omega are related this t is 2 pi over omega and your frequency which is 1 by time period is omega by 2 pi ok so now I will demonstrate a kind of wave which will roughly follow this pattern where you will be able to see what is the wavelength and perhaps uh, also get a feel of frequency so here is the apparatus you have this uh, vessel made of transparent acrylic and in this vessel we have put some water and then you have this bulb so the light from the bulb falls on water then it goes through the water and the bottom of this uh, vessel which is transparent and falls on this white sheet these are all frames iron frames so you concentrate on this area this is a plain paper white paper so you concentrate on this area here you have a coin here you have a coin which we have placed here and you can see the shadow of this coin here on this paper this is placed to give you a size scale here uh, you can measure the diameter of this uh, coin and here the diameter of this uh, shadow will tell you how much is 1 centimeter and all that ok now if I disturb this water surface what happens on this plain paper C right we disturb the surface of the water and because of that you have different curvatures at different uh, points and then the light which is falling on that uh, surface which is now curved so things will be transmitted according to the laws of refraction and the intensity of refracted light will be different at different points so that way 
whatever is there on the surface, the structure on the surface, somehow it will be imaged on this paper. Of course, it will have its own modification, light will do some modification, you will not exactly get what is happening here, but most of it, most of it you can get what kind of disturbance is here that you can see on this paper. Just see this. So, the wave is generated from the point where I touch the surface and then it spreads as a circular wave, it goes radially outward on the surface and then of course, it meets this uh, uh, walls and it reflects from there. There is a damping, so reflected intensities are much smaller, reflection are from all four surfaces. So, you have varieties of beautiful patterns which are made. I have a bead here, I have a bead here connected to a speaker and that uh, can be oscillated, this bead can be oscillated this bead can be oscillated and when it touches or it disturbs the water surface, then waves are generated. There is some electronics behind. So, using that electronics, I can give it um, controlled oscillations of desired frequency. So, I can oscillate it at uh, low frequency or high frequency and that can be adjusted through that electronics. All right, so now I am starting the experiment and I switch this power on so that some oscillation has started. Now, if you look at the pattern on this uh, plane sheet, you can see some whitish line and some grayish blackish lines and they are all, they seem to travel outward from some center and there is a periodicity in space. If you think of some instant, you have a white line, curved line, then you have another white line, then you have another white line, then you have another white line. So, there is a periodicity in a space and the separation between consecutive white lines or consecutive grayish lines that is the wavelength. So, when the source oscillates uh, in simple harmonic motion, or periodic motion, it creates waves with uh, wavelengths, you can now talk of wavelengths and frequency of course, you can talk of frequency, your bead is oscillating. So, all particles are oscillating with that same frequency, so that is the frequency of the wave. Now, I will increase the frequency and you look at the wavelength, whether it increases, decreases or remains the same. So, I am increasing the frequency. See what happened to the wavelength, the separation between the consecutive whitish line and consecutive blackish line, what happens to that separation as the frequency is increasing and see that as I increase the frequency, the wavelength is decreasing. Here is a question for you, we are showing the pattern on this white paper at a particular instant the shadow of the coin is also there. The diameter of this coin is 2.5 centimeters. From this you measure the wavelength in this pattern. So, in all the experiments that I had shown, you saw that when waves meet the boundary, they reflect from there. And if you have this uh, continuous wave formation like this oscillating bead, you are sending the waves and waves are also reflecting and both meet at the same place at the same time. Then uh, you have another phenomena which we call standing wave formation in which at certain points uh, there are uh, very small amplitudes of oscillations, at certain other points there are large amplitudes of oscillation but as a function of time everything is looks stationary. So, let me do some mathematics and then we will do experiments on that also. So, suppose you have two sine waves, one going in plus x direction, other in minus x direction, one ongoing, another reflected. So, the equations you can write it as uh, 
uh, some disturbance, some displacement. This is the ongoing wave. So, A sin k x minus omega t and the reflected wave which comes uh, in the negative x direction for that the equation will be a sin k x plus omega t x minus v t x plus v t. So, the net is sum of these two and that will be add these two 2 a sin k x and cos omega t. Now, there is very special thing about this. It contains two waves, one going in positive x direction, another going in negative x direction. But then at, at places where this k x is uh, 0 or integral multiple of pi. So, at places where this k x is equal to 0, pi, 2 pi, at these places, this is always 0. This net displacement, net disturbance is always 0 for all time, any t, any t. If this k x is an integral multiple of pi, this is 0. So, at these positions, your displacement is 0 always. These positions are known as nodes. And then uh, you have uh, another positions midway between these, where k x is pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, 5 pi by 2 or the integral multiple of pi by 2. In that case, this is always 1 or minus 1 does not matter because this is anyway going from plus 1 to minus 1, minus 1 to plus 1. So, here the amplitude, amplitude of oscillation, this is the amplitude, this cos omega t is the time variation and this is the amplitude. So, this amplitude will be 2 a maximum. So, at certain positions particles are vibrating uh, with large amplitudes, at certain other positions they are not vibrating at all, in between they have smaller amplitudes and so on. So, these maximum amplitude positions they are known as anti nodes. So, that would mean in a medium if I send a wave and if there are boundaries and it reflects may be in that space, in that medium, somewhere you do not have any disturbance, somewhere you have large displacement and all that. So, let us uh, see an experiment on a string where this kind of thing does happen. So, here is the apparatus, we have a string here, one end of this string is tied to a rod this rod goes into some uh, coil and so on and this electronics is all to vibrate this rod. And when this rod vibrates in a very small amplitude in fact, you would not be able to see that uh, sends waves on this string and on the other side this string goes over this pulley and then some weights are there on the, on the, on the other side and this is in some tension. So, that wave goes here reflects from the pulleys and then the two interfere to give you standing waves. So, if the tension, the frequency all those things are uh, nicely matched, you may expect some nodes and some anti nodes on this. So, let us see. So, now you can see in the middle the string is vibrating with uh, somewhat uh, large amplitude, whereas if you go towards the end that amplitude of oscillation decreases and here at the end here this is almost 0. So, this is node 
here in the middle you have nt node and then if you go on this side again the amplitudes decrease and finally here it is again a node. So, this is the fundamental mode of vibration for this string. So, here is a question for you we are showing you the shape of this uh, string as seen by the camera at a particular instant and you see the edge portion is uh, much sharper than the middle portion near that uh, antinode region in the middle region. So, the question is is the same string which is going up and down why at the edges this uh, seems to be much brighter than in the middle. Okay, so, here you see another set of parameters we have changed the tension by changing the weights on the pan hanging from the pulley. We have also changed little bit this length also and uh, you can see that now this point is not vibrating at all. This is a node here no one is holding this point no one has clamped this point this is free to vibrate, but even then it does not vibrate. So, this is a node this is a node where it is tied this is a node where it is meeting the pulley and in between two nodes here you can see the amplitudes are large this is an anti node this is another anti node. So, in this configuration when the string is vibrating in two loops you have three nodes and two anti nodes because the frequencies the tension and other things are matched accordingly.